What he said was, I knew I grew up in a racist town. I knew about the Nazis and Hitler and what was happening. You read that in the paper. And all I could think was, if Hitler would do that to white families and white children, as a black person, I don't have a chance. So I have to step up. I would like youth of America, especially minority youth of America, to remember the Tuskegee Airmen as some people who strive to get ahead, some people who did not quit. Grandpa Henry, Dad's father, whom passed away before I was born, but their family motto is, failure is not an option get an education. Growing up in those racist and segregated times, his father told all of his children, get an education because it's something that can never be taken from you. And dad was number six of nine. Uh, there was two teachers who in their town had been um, merit scholars, but for the fact that they were called in and told we can't have you be the merit scholar from our class. <laughs> so we're going to change your grades. Um, so they both became teachers, uh, an engineer, um, and a foot doctor it, of, of his five older siblings. <laughs> so, I mean, it was there. It, it was just, like I said, it was ingrained. I was interested in aviation after at the age of 13, I was a lone scout, a boy scout, and the boy scouts had a job one summer to uh, be policemen at an air show. We ringed the field and kept uh, spectators from running out onto the field, getting in front of an airplane or obstructing a pilot's passage. And after the air show, I convinced my father that uh, he should uh, buy an airplane ride for me. I could learn to get a pilot's license for approximately $50. $25 for the college courses, $25 for the examination, and I, I ate it up, really. Or shortly after I graduated, I took the, the pilot's examination to be in the Air Corps, and uh, I passed it with a very good score. So I went home and waited, and I tried to get a job, a part-time job, something like that. I couldn't get any employment. And uh, finally got a call from the Story County Draft Board. And now uh, they said, you're in the Army. And I said, no, I'm in the Air Corps. I said, I passed the examination. As a pilot, my papers are in Washington, I'm just waiting to get called to go for training. And they said, uh, you have been drafted and you'd better be at the uh, appointed place, which was Camp Dodge, Iowa, at the proper date, or you will be uh, picked up by the MPs and uh, arrested. So I decided I would be there and uh, get inducted. Finally the papers came from Washington. I turned them into the officers at Camp Dodge and uh, 
They said, well, you will just wait here until we tell you where to go. And uh, this was in October of 42. And uh, in May of 43, uh, they told me I was finally chosen. I was going down to Tuskegee, Alabama to get in the flight training program down there. Talking to Dad about his experiences, he had to go south. Um, that's where the cadets went. That's where they got their training. He talked about what it was like to take the train down there where you just bought a ticket and you got on the train. Then you got to a certain point and all the black people had to get out of the cars and go to the car at the end of the train threat of being washed out for no good reason. I mean, if you couldn't fly, they could wash you out. If you could fly, they could wash you out. I had my private pilot's license before I went down there, but that was no assurance that I was going to get through this military flying school. All of the cadets were under the same tension. I can get eliminated for doing something bad, something good, or for just nothing. When you've got the winds pinned on, the bars on your shoulders, uh, that's when you knew you had made it. That, that day and that hour. On the 12th of January, I started flying the P-40. Uh, to do that, they had pinned the wings on you, they had put the bars on your shoulder. They said, here's the tech orders, there's the airplane, now go and fly it. After flying the P-40, then we were transferred to Southridge Field, Michigan, where we flew the P-39. And uh, due to racial troubles there with the commanding officer, uh, the entire unit, training unit, was transferred to Walterboro, South Carolina. This was an effort to put black pilots in their place. They were not, the commanding officer said, we were not equal to whites and would never be, and he would not allow any uh, fraternization of the races on his base up in Selfridgefield, Michigan. So he transferred us to Walterboro, South Carolina, where with the more demanding or demeaning social setup, we could be put in our place. And uh, a month later, my class was uh, shipped over to uh, Italy. Uh, we went directly to Ramatelli, Italy, which was uh, in the vicinity of Foggia. The P-51s we got were uh, hand-me-downs. These were planes that the 325th fighter group had flown, some that the 52nd fighter group had flown, some that the 31st fighter group had flown. They had red and white stripes on the 31st group, solid yellow on the 52nd group, and yellow and black checkerboard on the 325th. So to identify us as a group, uh, they found red paint which would cover these other uh, group markings very easily, and so we became the Red Tails. I flew 63 and a half. I got shot down on my 64th mission. 